In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the volume of the parallelepiped given the adjacent edges v, w, and u, which are vectors. So how can we do this? Well, let's begin by drawing a picture. So here we have the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. Now let's say that vector v is along the x-axis. And let's say that vector w is along the y-axis. We could use these two vectors to form a parallelogram. And the area of that parallelogram is equal to the magnitude of the cross product of those two vectors. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add another vector, let's say vector u, and we're going to draw a new shape. So how can we find the volume of this parallel pipid? Notice that it's similar to the volume of a rectangular prism. Like the shape of it looks like a rectangular prism, though it's kind of slanted. And the volume for a rectangular prism is basically the area of the base times the height. So we have the area of the base, but we need to multiply it by the height. And it turns out that the volume of the parallelepiped is equal to the cross product of vector u and, I mean the dot product of vector u and the cross product of vectors v and w. So this right here is known as the triple scalar product. And that's what we need to find in order to calculate the volume of the parallelepiped. So if you look at this formula, this right here tells us the area. That's basically the area of the base. And vector u corresponds to the height of the parallelepiped. So when you multiply area by height, it will give you the volume. And that's just the way I think of the equation. Seeing it that way makes sense to me. Hopefully it makes sense to you as well. So now let's focus on this problem. Let's actually, let's get the answer. So how can we evaluate the triple scalar product? What do we need to do? All we need to do is basically find the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix. So first, you need to write vector u in the first row, and then vector v in the second row, and then vector w in the third row. So vector u, that's 2, 3, 6. And then vector v, it's 5, 1, 2. And then we have vector w, which is 1, 4, 3. Now for those of you who don't remember how to evaluate the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix, I recommend searching out a video that I created on YouTube entitled How to Find the Determinant of a 3 by 3 Matrix. And just type in Organic Chemistry Tutor. It should come up. But here's the gist of what you need to do. So the first thing you need to do is write the number in the first row and the first column. So we're going to write equals 2. And then we're going to create a 2 by 2 matrix. So the number 2 is in the first row, first column. And notice that it leaves behind these four numbers, which is what we're going to put in our 2 by 2 matrix. So we have 1, 2, 4, 3. And then it's going to be minus the second number in the first row, which is 3. And that number is in the first row, second column. So it leaves behind the numbers 5, 1, 2, 3. So let's put 5, 1, 2, 3 inside this matrix. And then plus the last number in the first row, which is 6. And that's in the first row, third column. So it leaves behind the numbers 
5114, as you can see here. Now the last thing that we need to do is we need to evaluate the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix. So let's say if we have the matrix A, B, C, D, it's going to be A times D minus B times C. So that's what we're going to do next to evaluate these three 2 by 2 matrices. So it's going to be 3 times 1, which is 3, and then minus 4 times 2, which is 8, and then minus 3. 5 times 3 is 15, minus 1 times 2, which is 2, and then plus 6. 5 times 4 is 20, minus 1 times 1, which is 1. Three minus eight is negative five. Fifteen minus two is thirteen. And twenty minus one is nineteen. Now two times negative five, that's negative ten. Three times thirteen is thirty-nine. Six times nineteen. Six times twenty is one twenty. Six times one is six, so one twenty minus six, that's one fourteen. So now we got to add these three numbers. Negative 10 plus negative 39 plus 114. That gives us 65. So this is the volume of the parallelepiped in cubic units. So this is the answer. Now let's move on to the next problem. Find the volume of the parallelepiped with the given vertices. So how should we do it? In this case, just like before, we need to take the information that we're given and somehow get three vectors that form adjacent edges on the parallelepiped. And the best way to do that is to find basically a starting point. In this case, point A, because that's the origin. And so we're going to draw our three vectors starting from point A. So we're going to say the first one is, let's call it vector v. So that's going from a to b. The second one, going from a to d, let's call that vector w. And the last one, a to e, we'll call it a vector u. So those are the three vectors that form adjacent edges on the parallelepiped. Now let's start with the first vector vector v. So vector v is basically the same as vector a, b, because it starts from a and it points towards b. Now if we take the difference between points b and a, if you subtract b minus a, you're going to get the vector 3, 0, 0. Next we have vector w, which starts from a and points towards d. And so if we subtract D from A, it's just going to be the same as point D. So we get the vector 1, 4, negative 1. And the last one, vector U, which is the same as vector AE, that's going to be 1, 2, and 5. So now that we have these three vectors, we can calculate the triple scalar product to get the volume. So the volume of the parallelepiped is going to equal the vector u times, or the dot product of vector u and the cross product of vectors v and w. So now let's turn this into a 3 by 3 matrix. So let's start with a vector u, which is 1, 2, 5. Next, we have vector v, which is 3, 0, 0. And finally, vector w. And that's 1, 4, negative 1. So let's start with the first number in the first row. So it's going to be 1. 
and then that number is in the first row first column leaving behind a 2 by 2 matrix 0 0 4 negative 1 now the next number in the first row is 2 but we need to put a negative sign in front of that and that number is in the first row second column leaving behind the numbers 3 1 0 negative 1 now the last number in the first row is 5 and that is in the first row third column and so we have left over 3 0 1 4 so this is going to be 1 times 0 times negative 1 is 0 minus 0 times 4 which is also 0 and then here we have 3 times negative 1 which is negative 3 0 times 1 is 0 and then 3 times 4 is 12 minus 1 times 0 which is 0 so this whole thing is 0 negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6 and 5 times 12 is 60 so the volume of the parallelopiped is 66 cubic units. And so that's basically it for this video. Now you know how to calculate the volume of a parallelopiped using the triple scalar product. Thanks for watching.